¿Cómo está? Alright, we're on the next section, it's 3 dash 4 perpendicular lines. Okay, we already talked about parallel, which means they run side by side forever. See, these are parallel. Alright, perpendicular is what I consider the opposite. Instead of parallel with the exact same slope, they go perpendicular with complete opposite slopes. See that? If you put a corner of a piece of paper right there, that'd be per perpendicular, okay? That'd be perfect. It's a 90 degree angle, okay? Now, first thing you know about perpendicular, I already told you, because they're 90 degrees everywhere around. Make sense? Okay? Second thing you need to know is the term perpendicular bisector, okay? Which is just really a combination of two terms you've already learned, okay? Perpendicular bisector means that it's perpendicular, which means that it makes a 90 degree angle, See that? 90 degree angle. That's perpendicular. Bisect means cuts in half. We already talked about that. With a bicycle, has two wheels. That means you're cutting it into two equal sections. That means that's congruent to that. Perpendicular, bisector. Perpendicular, bisector. Just a combination of two terms you already know. Okay? Now, another thing you need to know. Okay, it's not essentially a term. It's more of a concept, I would say. But it's talking about the shortest distance from a point to a line. Say I have a point right here, and I've got a line right here. Okay? What's going to be my shortest distance to that line from that point? Is it going to be like a squiggly thing? Am I going to go up here and loop around here, like all around the rosemary bush, and then boop? No. Some people say straight to it. Well, if I go straight to it like that, is that the shortest route? Nay, it's not. The shortest route from a point to any line is going to form what kind of angle? Oh my goodness, a right angle. Any point to any line, the shortest distance possible, humanly possible, makes a right angle. Okay? The end. All right. It's like an example would be like if an airplane's flying above the ground. Okay? And they want to measure its altitude, which we'll learn later. All right? They don't. When they measure that, they don't say you're at you know sixteen thousand feet which I don't know if that's even possible, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're at like, say you're at like, I don't know, 16,000 feet. You don't measure it by saying, oh, go back to NASA. That's how far we measure everything from. No, they go where? Straight to the ground. That's how they can keep an accurate measurement of how high you are off the ground, by going straight here. If everybody was going side to side, you wouldn't be able to just, or uh, the word I'm looking for, any of that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to go straight down, in which it makes what kind of angle? A 90 degree angle. Very good. Okay? So that's point to a line. Now, what you're going to use it for in this chapter is, uh, let's say you have like this. They're going to want, like say this is, say this is x and this is 5 minus x. Okay? Let's say, actually, I apologize. Let's say this is 13. Now, what you're going to do is, they're going to say, give the me possible measurements for x. Well, they didn't give us enough information here to figure this sucker out. So what we got to do is, what do we know about this line? Just told you. We know it's the shortest route from here to here. That means it has to be shorter than this right here. So we write it in at inequality. 13 has to be shorter than 5 minus x. So, 13 is smaller than 5 minus x. And then we just solve for x. Subtract 5 over here, turns into 8. Now, usually you work an inequality just like it's an equal sign. The only time you change it is when you uh, multiply or divide a negative. And obviously, I didn't think too far ahead. So, you're going to have to divide by negative 1, which means you switch the sign. Which would turn it into negative 8 is greater than x. So that means x has to be less than negative 8. It can be any number less than negative 8. Did I say it right the first time? Probably not. Whatever. Forget everything I just said. x has to be less than negative 8. It has to be, or else this is not going to work. Okay? It was a very poor choice for examples. I apologize. Alright? Next section, or next theorem we're going to talk about. If two intersecting lines form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. Okay, what that's saying is, if <clears throat> we talked about linear pair in the last, whenever we talked about it last, 
uh, a linear pair is a pair of angles that make a line. Okay? So, what it's saying is, if you've got a linear pair where these two angles are congruent, what's the only two angles that can be the same and still add up to 180? 90 and 90. Therefore, they have to be perpendicular because they both be 90. Alright? Next thing. It's called the perpendicular transversal theorem. Remember, if I go too fast or if I say something you didn't catch, pause it, rewind it, do whatever you got to do. Okay? Perpendicular transversal theorem. It says, in a plane, which is just a flat surface that extends forever, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of the two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other one. All that's saying is, if two lines are parallel, and there's a line that cuts through it and it's perpendicular there, it has to be perpendicular to this one as well. Which, to be honest, every single angle there is going to be 90 degrees. Okay? Because whenever two line, parallel lines are cut by a transversal, only two options you have are they're congruent or they're supplementary. And 90 would be congruent to 90. And 90 is also supplementary to 90. So everything's 90. I know, right? Fun stuff. Next, if two coplanar lines are perpendicular to the same line, then the two lines are parallel. So it's pretty much this one. Switch. Remember how we talked about converse in the last section where we took what we had and we switched it? Same thing here. Here we said if these are parallel and that's 90, then that one's 90. This time we're saying if these two are both 90, then these have to be parallel. Make sense? I hope so because that would make sense. All right, and that's it for this section. The end.